Good morning, everybody. Uh, hopefully this will go all right. I'm doing a couple things just slightly differently today. So this is a little bit of an experiment. So hopefully people will bear with me. <clears throat> Let me jump over to my notes somewhere i've got notes no not that one and there we go okay welcome to another sunday live stream Good to see everybody again, and hopefully everybody is doing well. Good morning, Joe and Catherine. Welcome. So today, I guess we're we're mainly going to talk about some things I've been playing with, uh, mostly in Proxmox. Uh, so I do have. Good morning, David. I do have a Windows 11 VM that I've set up uh, using the updated instructions uh, for doing it in Proxmox. And uh, one of the more recent features that Proxmox has added is a virtual TPM module. So under normal circumstances, my uh, my sad old uh, 1U dual processor Xeon system, uh, old super micro system, um, would not meet the specifications to run Windows 11 <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but uh, with the with the uh, Vert IO drivers. And the virtual TPM module options, uh, it's, it's actually up and running. So I'm going to switch over to my notes one more time. So as some of you may have noticed... Uh, as much as I try to talk myself out of it, I did, I did end up purchasing the B-Link GTR7 Mini PC with the Ryzen 3750H, uh, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 500 gig NVMe SSD. Uh, since that purchase, um, they first spiked up by $105. And then they went unavailable. So uh, the the next stock is probably stuck in a shipping container uh, waiting to go to the Amazon. Uh, so when I got this machine, I did all the Windows 10 updates, took an image, and then updated it to Windows 11, which was the biggest reason I got this machine so I could have one physical machine running Windows 11 and be able to test it. And I did post earlier in the week a rather short video uh, that showed uh, connecting to this Windows 11 machine uh, with remote desktop. And when you disconnect from the machine, it crashes and restarts the machine. Uh, so when I installed the Windows 11 VM in Proxmox this morning, I thought, okay, well... At least if I if I crash this machine, it's it's a VM and it's not going to hurt anything. 
or risk hurting anything. And what do you know? It didn't crash. I was able to disconnect from the VM uh, with the remote desktop application and it just stayed up and running. So I am starting to wonder if this again gets back to the B-Link being an AMD system. Uh, I have not yet tested this on a an Intel system that is actually capable of running Windows 11. But I would be interested if anybody is able to test that and being able to compile that information and uh, be able to narrow it down. Uh, because although the, the uh, Proxmox VM is running on an Intel Xeon, the processor that is being identified in Windows in that VM is a vert, uh, a vert IO uh, KVM CPU. So it's it's really tricking Windows 11 into uh, doing my bidding. <laughs> um, so uh, let's see. We've got our normal crew here. Uh, Again, good morning to Catherine and Joe and David. Welcome, everybody. Uh, hope things have been going well for all of you this this past week or couple of weeks since my last uh, my last live stream. Uh, I I did have some pretty good success with that uh, Ubuntu OEM video. So uh, thank you to anybody that watched that. Uh, it really does help to uh, release a video like that on the same day that a new release of Ubuntu is coming out. So <laughs> um, I will likely duplicate that effort uh, when we're coming up on uh, 21.0 or 22.04, uh, which is going to be the next long term support release. So, uh, let's see. I've already downloaded the new chipset driver, Catherine. It's it's uh, still crashing for me when I when I disconnect from it. Uh, I made sure that I downloaded that, and I've got the latest BIOS on the B Link box, and so I'm just kind of doing a wait and see to uh, try to determine, uh, you know, if they come out and actually admit that there's a problem with this particular issue. Uh, let's see. I'll get to installing Windows 11 on one of my PCs soon. I have to lend my experimental modern PC to my daughter so she can take the last two parts of her architect license exam. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, so uh, keeping with the idea of trying something new. Uh, well, before we go into that, I guess we've, I've got some announcements first. Uh, so starting November, uh, the, the first Sunday, November, I will be going back to doing the live streams every Sunday. Uh, the caveat being that there are some possible exceptions that will happen during the holidays, uh, which will which I will be announcing uh, any canceled live streams on the community tab on my channel page. And uh, hopefully that will get notifications out to people so they're not waiting around wondering why I'm not doing a live stream. Uh, I will also try to get a notice out on the Matrix server. 
Uh, speaking of Matrix, um, I am going to try to cut the live stream off by 12.30 today. That's 12.30 Eastern. Uh, and then I will hang around on Matrix until right around 3 o'clock. And hopefully, hopefully people will uh join in and and uh hang out there a little bit and have some fun with that uh i also have an interesting well hopefully interesting video in the planning stages uh that will be released the week of thanksgiving here in the u.s and there's a giveaway that will be associated with that video I still have to work out the details on the giveaway. Uh, but uh, since I have a dedicated Windows 11 box and I also have a, a Windows 10 box still on my network, uh, I have decided that I'm going to start doing a few more Windows videos. I'm not going to go too deep in it because there are people that uh, – I've been doing it longer and probably do it better than what I would. So, uh, but I know that a large group of my audience still runs Windows. And my angle on this is hopefully going to be integration between uh, multiple operating systems. So, I have set up my network in such a fashion that I have tried to approach it from a heterogeneous standpoint, uh, meaning not everything is running the same OS. And so I've got Windows, I've got Mac OS, and I've got Linux, and soon I'll have some more BSD going on on the network. And just for the sake of being able to learn things and uh, see what fun issues or opportunities or problems might arise out of running multiple systems. So, uh, let's see. Oh, great question, Joe. Uh, Matrix is an open source uh, encrypted uh, platform that is similar to uh, Slack and Discord and things of that nature. I've tried out those other platforms. I was never all that impressed with them. And I just sort of landed on matrix and I think it's got a fun name. So, uh, I, I guess it just kind of stuck out to me and, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I got there. Um, uh, we've got a few people that have, uh, have started hanging out on, on the matrix server. I haven't been on too much this week. Uh, myself, uh, which is why I'm I'm announced earlier that I was hoping to hang out there until three or so. Uh, maybe I can dump the put my fingers on it. I might be able to put the. Oh, I know where that is. Uh, the information for the matrix server in the chat here momentarily. Give me just a minute or two. It's, it's interesting when you're trying to run these live streams all by yourself and <laughs> drop, drop, uh, links and things in. So can I put my fingers on that? So this one, there we go. 
hopefully this is the right link. So, uh, so matrix, well, let me share my screen here. I'll bring up the client. So matrix will do voice and video. Let me actually share my screen. So, so far we've had three people in addition to myself uh, in the chat. Um, and it's, it's uh, sparked a few interesting conversations, uh, but they do have a voice call function up here. I've not tested this. Uh, currently I am running this off from one of the official matrix servers. Uh, there is, since it's open source, there is an option to, there is an option to run your own. So this is kind of my first stab into uh, managing a uh, server of this nature, the chat type server. Uh, my thought is that possibly in 2022 hopefully before the end of the first quarter of 22 i will be able to migrate this over to a vps and i would likely disable the the voice calls as much as possible and just use it strictly for chat uh but that's uh that's uh little glimpse into matrix the the client is called element uh, and that is a cross-platform client and there are other interesting ones out there and available uh, for various platforms including a client that will run in uh, the terminal on a Linux system I'm I'm assuming if you're on Windows and you're using Windows subsystem for Linux, you could probably run it there as well, um, which is probably more information than anybody wanted, but <laughs> sometimes I get carried away. Um, so... Uh, so it could be a setting in the BIOS. Um, I will have to, I will have to look at that, uh, after the live stream. Good morning, Carlos. Welcome. Okay, so let me go back to my notes here real quick. So we got through got through announcements. And so the next thing I wanted to cover is just a little bit of Ubuntu 2110 and set this VM up this morning and I installed my um, remote access software because it just makes for a nicer um nicer image to record for the videos. 
and I don't have remote desktop set up on this machine yet. So uh, that was that was the other piece that I want to do with this at some point and do an updated video. Uh, people seem to gravitate towards the video I did a while back, uh, maybe a year ago, uh, about installing the remote desktop server on an Ubuntu machine and being able to use the same software you'd use from a Windows PC or a Mac to remote desktop into, you know, whatever you want a remote desktop into on, on the local network. So uh, I will say I do, I do continue to like in the in the standard gnome version of of ubuntu i i do continue to like this uh settings application it's it's clean it's functional it just works for most of the things i need to do uh, i'm not nearly as big into desktop customizations as I was, you know, in 2001, um, I just don't uh, get the enjoyment out of it. Uh, I mean, I change desktop back backgrounds, but that's that's about it. You know, I do a few other customizations. Um, one of the things. Uh, let's try it from here first. Um, one of the things that's nice to have, let's see if this package is actually available. So GNOME tweaks, we'll install it from the store. Or uh, Ubuntu Software Center whatever they want to call it this this time around. Um, it adds some extra features, extra customization abilities to the, to the settings. Uh, I've not played with this in a while, uh, but this is something that is uh, used pretty substantially um, throughout the Ubuntu using community, the GNOME using community. And while going whole hog on some of these customizations, uh, where find out where they stuck this. So enhanced GNOME three settings. Uh, so this can install and manage themes and extensions, change power settings, manage startup applications, and enable desktop icons, among other things. Let's go ahead and open their website up and take a look. I often wish there were uh, freely available options like this for other systems, but this is a pretty interesting uh, piece of software. It's, uh, again, you know, your mileage may vary with it. Some of the, some of the settings could cause instability. Uh, so if we go to appearance, this is showing 
what do we got here? Um, and maybe this doesn't work so well with GNOME 40, which is one of the new new features of this current version of Ubuntu. Uh, let's see. That does not. Okay, so one bad thing about flip-flopping between different uh, operating systems is keeping all the keyboard shortcuts straight in your head. But anyways, that's uh, one of the interesting things that could be played with. I just am having difficulty putting my finger out exactly where those options are exposed, which is all right. I think one of the options was in desktop icon. There we go. That's part of it. Um, size for the desktop icons, we'll say small. And I did change the home folder to small. Show personal folder on the desktop. There we go. That's getting to look a little better. Show external drives on the desktop. That's not practical because it's a VM. Show network drives on the desktop. So if we did connect to a network drive, that could be handy. Um, and just for the sake of argument, Let's uh, let's connect to Lord and Icon. I'm not going to cooperate with me. Zero cool may cooperate. Okay, so we'll do it this way. I think zero cool is 110. No. Okay, well. We do. They're not liking me today. Okay, well, so much for that. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and disconnect from... Well, before I do that, let me see. Are there any questions in chat about the... About Ubuntu? Um... Uh, so Catherine, no, that's not the S it's not the S E R model. Um, it is. The little guy I got is the G T R. I think it's the G T R seven. This little blue one. Um, this one right here. I did not pay that price though. <laughs> uh, I got it at under six hundred dollars. This is the um if I can copy from the Ubuntu side and paste it in chat or not. Oh, look at that. Uh, see you later, David. I don't know if I missed you, but thanks for stopping in. 
I will see you tonight in your live stream. Uh, so yeah, the, the Windows 11 dedicated box I've got is this uh, GTR7. Um, I've seen it labeled GR7 some places, GTR7 other places. Uh, but this is this is the one I got the 16 gig uh, RAM and 512 uh, SSD for that. It's it's got it's got dual Ethernet ports, so that's not bad. So I'll go ahead and disconnect from the. Ubuntu machine or Ubuntu VM and close out of that. So I did want to try something a little bit different in this uh, next segment. Uh, so I did go through Let's see, remove that from stream. I did go through and do that Windows uh, 11 install this morning. And I wanted to play play with this new feature of StreamYard. And it lets me upload and add a video to the stream. So we'll see how this works because it's going to be streaming from the StreamYard server and not from me, so hopefully this will look okay. Let me go ahead and add that. So, this is just basic, your basic uh, Windows install running under Proxmox and sped up a great deal. <laughs> so, once this uh, gets into it, uh, it should go halfway decent. I have cut out some footage just to uh, make this a little more palatable for people to watch. But in case anybody looks at this video later on and has not ever done a Windows 11 install, at least they can know what they're getting themselves into. Uh, I guess worth pointing out is on, on uh, Proxmox, since the hardware is all virtualized, it's not being passed through to the, to the VM, so you don't get that one-to-one -one relationship with what's actually on the motherboard. Um, I did have to, uh, and it looks like we've flown past that already, but I did have to uh, add a second uh, virtual optical drive to get this to install. Otherwise, it doesn't see that there is a virtual uh, hard drive available. And then since the, since the um, network is network card is virtualized as well, it doesn't uh, it doesn't have network during the stall, which isn't a bad thing because Windows likes to complain if you've got a network connection during install and try to force you into doing a uh, Microsoft account instead of, instead of doing local accounts, which is still my preference. And uh, from the videos I've seen, David seems to prefer that method as well. Um, uh, but this, uh, this ISO image that you can download from the Red Hat people, it does give you a slick little installer that it just ran through on screen. Um, 
which once you've got the basic install of Windows 11 done, you can run through this installer program and it will update all of the uh, devices on the system that were not recognized during install and didn't have drivers. So I am still in the early stages of, of tweaking the Windows 11 install on Proxmox. I do think I can get some additional performance out of it. Uh, currently, there are uh, four uh, processor cores assigned to this. And, you know, it's, it's enough. It gets the system up and running. Uh, it does identify as having a, a TPM 2.0. So that's that's uh, kind of interesting. Uh, I am I am impatiently waiting for VirtualBox to come out with their 7.0 version so that I could potentially run Windows 11 in a VM on VirtualBox on a uh, one of my Dell desktop machines that is currently running Ubuntu. Um, so that will be interesting to see. Uh, it looks like that video played all right. I think, uh, I think the video is about done, but it will, it will wrap around the beginning and I'll take it off screen once, once that happens. So, uh, thank you, Joe. It was, it was, uh, a good price for that machine. And, and so I jumped on it. Um, it jumped from, I think I paid 585 before tax to like 695. Um, and then uh, within another day, it, uh, there we go, it's wrapped around. And then within another day or two, it had completely dropped off Amazon. So, not a huge fan of the Windows 11 UI. I'm happy with Windows 10. Yeah, um... There are still some things I'm I'm getting used to, some things that I'm not sure I like uh, yet, but um, at the same time, I don't find it as bad as uh, other people have made it out to be. Um, and I will... Uh, I got to check out the windows 11 still. Well, cool. Um, so that actually was the next part of, of what I wanted to talk about here. Um, uh, let's see. Flash top back up and we'll connect to, um, back to the B link with, uh, flash top because I know that won't crash it. So I don't know. I would have liked, and I, it seems like I read an article or saw some mention in my newsfeed yesterday that there is a way to make the, the uh, task bar translucent. So it doesn't stick out quite so much. Um, if it was translucent, I don't think I'd have as much of a problem with, the, the icons being centered, it does look kind of odd right now. But um, in my opinion, at, at this point, the, the biggest step forward is settings. And let me actually put that on screen. Uh, this is hands down, no contest in, in my opinion, a huge step forward from um, 
from Windows 10. Uh, there are a lot more things in the settings app now that previously you had to go to control panel to do in Windows 10. Uh, that was one of my chief complaints uh, from a usability standpoint about Windows 10. And, you know, while I tend to still like the old school control panel, uh, my attitude is slowly shifting towards this, uh, especially since they've enhanced the search capabilities a bit. Um, but you know, it's, it's not, it's not for everybody. And honestly, I don't, I don't see myself, uh, running windows 11 as my daily driver, uh, anytime soon, if ever, but I will give them credit for doing, making that improvement. Now, the other thing that they've improved, and I'm going to open a terminal as administrator here. Excuse me. Um, uh, and I don't remember the, the command right off, but there's, there's a simplified command for installing uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, the other thing is the terminal is the default now. Um, if we come into the right click menu on the start button, we have Windows Terminal, whereas Windows 10, uh, you started with PowerShell. Uh, and this does tend to launch a lot faster than um, the old system did as far as launching a PowerShell command line. And I've already installed Ubuntu on here and in WSL2. And that comes up pretty quick as well. All in all, I, I think they made some good progress on making it more usable for uh, developers and people that do spend a lot of time in the Linux uh, arena, I guess you could say. It, it definitely makes it more palatable for me when I have to uh, use Windows at work and, you know, I manage uh, a small Windows network. But, you know, it's, it's one of those things I can see where this is going to get better for my work environment once we start migrating over in the next year or so. Hugo, welcome. Hope you're doing well, sir. While you've been on here, Frontier sent me an ad. They are now in my area for fiber, and I ordered one gig symmetrical for $60 a month. Ugh. I wish. <laughs> uh, I've got a friend down in Illinois who has communist cast. I mean, Comcast. Um, and... I think he's got one gig symmetric, but I think he's still on cable. I, I don't know how they pulled that off, but he gets some pretty, pretty wicked speeds. Uh, let's see. Catherine says in the B link BIOS UFI, check for IOMMU and enable it. All right. Let me make a note of that. I can't, uh, I took my other keyboard in the other room, so I can't do that easily right now. Um, uh, 
I have made a note and uh, in between the end of the live stream and me jumping into the matrix server, I will go grab the other keyboard and we can uh, see about making that happen. So thank you for that tip, Catherine. I appreciate it. Okay. So yeah, there, there are still things um, that I will probably never like about windows uh, there are still advantages to using Linux in a full VM type environment on Windows. Um, there are still commands that you can't do. Um, uh, some of these work, some of these don't. So LSPCI, if you run it as root under sudo, um, LSUSB doesn't pull up anything where I do have a Logitech uh, mouse unit plugged in. Um, LSCPU does work. Uh, so that's showing the Ryzen. 7, 3750 with Radeon graphics. Uh, all in all, I have to say this is a, a decent little box. It's it's very unobtrusive. It's actually smaller. Um, it's about the same width, but it lacks the depth of the Mac Mini. It might make a little bit more fan noise, but overall, it's a really quiet system and uh, well suited for applications where you might want to just uh, make yourself a faux all-in-one PC and use the visa mount and mount the mount the B link right on the back of the monitor it does come with a bracket for that so yeah, there are definitely things that you can do here. Um, I've not played with graphical Linux applications on Windows yet. That's something that I will uh, make a video about at some point. Uh, install the vert IO drivers. Those are installed on that VM. This is actually the B-Link box that is running native right on the hardware. Uh, but yes, the vert IO drivers are installed on the VM, Hugo. Uh, let's see. So... One thing I haven't tried on this is installing Nmap, and that does not find Nmap. I'll try doing that first. I don't think there are any updates that need to be run at this point, but it's never, it's never, well, I guess I was wrong about that. Uh, never a bad thing to, to run updates on this. So the other, the other thing that people might find interesting that I did on this machine, um, uh, is I installed Chocolatey as a package manager. So all of these uh, packages here were installed with Chocolatey uh, right down to my virtual box. Um, but let's see. Um, 
everything on here is pretty much um, open source, freely available software at this point. Uh, I even grabbed the Cinebench uh, for benchmarking. Uh, the one thing that I will say is the default configuration that B-Link ships in is one stick of RAM. And I know that AMD systems tend to perform better when you've got dual channel. Uh, so I will be adding another 16 gig stick to this and bumping RAM up to 32, which I won't complain about. And at that point, I would... I would be willing to do some benchmarks and and post those and compare them to the the M1 Mac Mini and different things of that nature. Uh, but it does it does what I need it to do, and I'm not a gamer, so um, you, you know, being able to have a dedicated video card wasn't as big a deal to me. Uh, my interest in having a dedicated windows box was more uh, just to be able to make some windows videos uh, on windows 11 that is running on the hardware and not necessarily virtualized on older equipment. So uh, yeah, this, um, when I ran through all these and I discovered that uh, there was only one stick of RAM in this box, it's like, okay, well, I will, that will be my <laughs> next purchase. Uh, likely next weekend, I will, I will uh, get that ordered and uh, get it installed. And I might poke around inside the, the case a little bit when I do that. I know there's room, I believe there's room in here for potentially for another, um, another solid state drive, um, M.2, uh, but there's also a bracket uh, in the lid so I could install a two and a half inch SSD as well, uh, making this you know, a nice little powerhouse as far as storage, uh, it could potentially make a, a solid NAS if uh, if it wasn't completely overpowered for such a, a uh, uh, an application. So, uh let's see let me check my notes and see if there's anything else i wanted to make sure we covered with running that video i wasn't uh entirely sure how much extra stuff to have on here um okay so I guess I'll add uh, fuel to the fire a little bit. Um, Apple this past Monday did announce uh, some new machines and some new processors. Um, and uh, uh, <laughs> the, the pricing... <laughs> The pricing on these is is kind of nuts, uh, but I'm going to be interested to see next week once there's uh, actual machines in people's hands, what the performance is like. Uh, but the early leaked performance tests have shown that the in some configurations, I'll, I'll, I'll put that out there. In some configurations, uh, the M1 
Pro and M1 Max uh, with their enhanced uh, GPU cores, enhanced number of GPU cores, uh, they are outperforming almost every uh, PC laptop, even with the uh, 3080, what is it, 3080 mobile, uh, and doing this at a much lower uh, power usage. And I know that uh, uh, you know gamers aren't so concerned with power usage. Um, the the last uh, the last PC build I did for a friend of mine um, was a, a monster. Um, I don't even remember which which Intel CPU he put in it. He had me put in it, but uh, uh, that thing was a beast. It was it was uh, more or less a two day build to get that thing completely up and running. Uh, two twenty eighty Ti's, I believe. Um, and yeah, it was it was nuts. The only thing he kicked himself on. Um, the only thing he kicked himself on was that he went with a smaller solid state drive than he probably should have. And within a year we were, uh, adding, adding that. So, well, Joe, thank you. I, I will definitely put that towards, towards the Ram and, uh, um, let me bring up the specs for that machine again. Um, so it's a 30, it's an AMD Ryzen 3750H. Uh, these are currently unavailable on Amazon as of yesterday. Uh, but I got the 16 gig, 512 uh, solid state uh, version of it. Uh, so let me take this and put that here. Um, what is popping up here? So these might still be available direct from B-Link. Uh, I am not entirely sure. I guess we could just take one of these and add it to the cart. Uh, they are <laughs> quite a bit more expensive than what I paid through Amazon, however. Um, so... seven so let's see and I'm not logged into my Amazon account they're currently oh, it looks like they're back in stock for 629 which is about $55 more than I paid for mine. Um, but it's it's a nice little... Oh, that's the Ryzen 5 model. Um, that's not it. Even that's more expensive. This is the one. So that's out of stock. Looks like you couldn't get it until January. Although they're offering a $60 coupon. Um, <laughs> but uh, I did configure the, the, um, the fingerprint scanner. It uh, seems to work okay with that Windows Hello. 
um, I would be inclined um, at some point I want to get myself a couple of the YubiKey bios uh, that were just released. Um, that have an integrated fingerprint reader on them. Just because I trust YubiKey more or Yubico more than I would trust a company in China that builds computers. Um, <laughs> so uh, take that for for what it is. Um. Yes, it does have two LAN ports, and uh, um, I think they're more expensive than Protectly. Uh, but you know, if if you just want a simple box, um, it it uh, might serve that purpose well. Hello, Terminal for Life. Welcome. Uh, so yes, it likely could be used as a PFSense router. Uh, since I've got enough NAS box boxes on my network that I can make image backups, um, I might try that at some point. Uh, I had been contemplating uh, taking another image now that Windows 11 is running on this and playing with Ubuntu directly on the hardware and uh, PFSense would be another contender to install directly on it. So completely agree about Yubico. <laughs> yeah, I've got a couple, I've got a, a YubiKey 4 and a YubiKey 5 NFC uh, and I really have been impressed with those. Um but the bio, the bio to me just takes it to a, a, another level. Thanks for stopping in, Hugo. Appreciate it. Have a good day. All right. So any other questions or comments or things that you want me to look at while we're on the on the uh, on on the idea of looking at other things, <laughs> I guess. A little tongue tied today. Uh, out right now, TV here has a bunch of old stuff playing, so I'm sneakily listening to the stream. <laughs> All right, have a good afternoon. Appreciate you stopping in. Uh, the bio is. $80 for the USB type A and $85 for USB C um, is what I saw them at earlier. Buy now. Uh, yes, $80 and $85. So, have you ever used swap on RAM? I try to avoid it. Uh, all my Linux systems have a swap space, but I try to avoid using it uh, as much as possible. Uh, it just it slows things down. I think I'm setting that up just for the hell of it. <laughs> All right. So uh, I will have a video out this week on Wednesday. Uh, uh, as much as, as it pains me to, to start doing this, um, I am going to start... Uh, probably every other week, at least, 
uh, putting out Windows videos on Wednesdays. Um, I'm I'm curious to uh, see about getting to the bottom of this this issue with the the B Link and uh, remote desktop crashing it <laughs> when you disconnect. Uh, because that's that's not uh, an acceptable thing in my book. And, you know, if it's happening on this machine, I'm sure there are other people on other hardware seeing the same type of, of issue. So that uh, that is something that um, I... I do want to keep an eye on, um, you know, a lot of this, this, uh, adding of, of windows videos is, uh, because it's, it's great for me to do things that I can document through video and be able to reference in my day job. And knowing that in the next year, we're going to start rolling out um, some new machines for the staff and likely likely um, moving the staff to Windows 11. Um, I just, I wanted to be able to head some of the problems off before we before we start rolling out new machines and hey um even if i find it less enjoyable than than using linux um it, if it makes for a good video then i'll put it out there and hopefully other people will will uh uh find it useful So let's see, Catherine, I did see that, uh, uh, that email. Um, I must not have responded to that. I apologize for that. Um, that, uh, wasn't for this particular machine. Uh, I did find that interesting though. Oh, uh, you know, I'll, I I made some changes in my office this week and so my lighting is is kind of uh out of whack. That might help a little bit. Um I uh I don't have the green screen in here. Um so it's it's just changed the changed the way everything lights in this room. Uh, so I guess that looks a little better. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, a a better camera is on the horizon. Hopefully next year. Um, but. Uh, since I went probably a little overboard on buying computers this year, I'm going to have to take a serious look at my budget and see how quickly I can, I can, uh, I can make that happen. So, uh, let's see. Yeah. So usually this camera does all right. I think it was a lot of it was just that I left the lighting at the normal settings. And uh, since I was busy getting some other things around before the live stream, I didn't adjust those the way I should have. Uh, so that's, that's my bad. Uh, super hidden. Um, so 
So yeah, if you want to come on uh, the Matrix chat after after the uh, the live stream, I'd be very interested in in uh, getting some more information from you, Catherine. That would that would be wonderful. Um, so see if we can't get this little issue resolved and and uh, go from there. Yeah, I'm uh I kind of like the look without the green screen as well. Um it it made the my office because the room is kind of small, it made the office cramped having the the green screen set up in here all the time. I've also behind me I moved out a uh a shelf uh shelving unit that had a printer and a couple of computers on it. I moved that into the other room and it's just a matter right now of getting some things cleaned up. I want to potentially put up a couple of posters or something on that back wall uh, next to the door uh, and maybe put some uh, colored LED lighting uh, down at the base as well. Uh, if I can, I want to cover the, the window in that door behind me and that would, um, that would, uh, really change things a little bit too. So I'm glad the audio sounds good. Uh, I'm using a Shure SM7B. It was, uh, not a cheap microphone, but <laughs> I I have I have been getting a lot of compliments on the audio since I switched over to it. Uh and I'm running it through a Behringer uh, I forget the model number, a Behringer uh audio interface. Um uh, BIOS advanced And AMD CBS in the black font. Okay. And then fourth line NBIO options, common options. All right. Uh, currently, this is a cheapy camera. I've I've gone through a few webcams. I've had various issues. Uh, this is one that David over at PE for Doers reviewed. It's a ten dollar webcam, uh, and it's it's actually held up fairly well. <laughs> um, I want to do a little more testing with some of the other cameras I've got access to, but all of these are are much better than the Logitech C920 I was using for the longest time. So, uh, I, I'm I'm torn on the idea of moving to 4K because I don't have 4K monitors right now, so. Um, I, I don't know. It, it seems like a bust to have a 4k camera and not be able to view it, uh, view the footage in, in the full resolution. And she is a second line NB configuration. And there, the IOMMU is set to auto, enable it, and leave, and then leave the BIOS.
Okay. I will I will do that right after the right after the live stream and see what we can do with it. Oh, no, no worries. I, I'm sure that's a, a YouTube limitation <laughs> and nothing more. Um, Logitech Brio is pretty good. Obviously, a real camera is always better, but the Brio isn't bad for $200. Yeah, I've looked at the Brio and I've looked at the OBSBOT, uh, which has the... Um, uh, it's, it's, it's on a gimbal and it has auto, uh, AI based tracking built in and the, uh, for the same $200, the, the re a lot of the reviewers were leaning towards the OBS bot. Um, I'm just, I'm kind of torn at this point, uh, on, on what to get next. Um, on the bright side, these webcams that I've got, most of them have have a uh, a tripod uh, threading in in their base, and so I can mount them and use them as a secondary or tertiary camera uh, for uh, viewing innards of computers and and different things like that. Uh, which is something I want to add to some of my videos going forward. Uh, it's just a matter of finishing the moving of stuff around in my office and, and having a space to make that happen. So, but I'll take a look at the Brio as well. Uh, you got a good point about us not moving much on camera. Uh, I certainly don't tend to. <laughs> uh, the The problem is that us tech guys don't tend to move a lot in general, and um, it's a whole other issue there. Uh, in, in some ways, I think it's better than having to be outside doing work and, and fighting allergies. But in other ways, uh, I I can feel all the years of sitting and uh, it's catching up to me a little bit. So, uh, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. We are at 12.18... I need to move around more for sure. Yeah, I think there are a lot of us in that same boat. Um, hopefully, hopefully 2022 will uh, allow me to be outdoors a little bit more. Um, I I got back into starting to to walk again. Uh, on a regular basis for a little while and then the weather got all crazy with rain and uh, so it it made for some made for some uh, more difficult choices on whether to walk outdoors during that or not so Hopefully in 2022, we'll be past the plague a little bit more and uh, uh, it will be a little less intimidating to be out amongst the public and walking. Uh, of course, I've, I've got kind of a an interesting routine for my walks. Um, there, there's a cemetery within walking distance of my apartment. So I, I walk over to the cemetery and then I walk each of the loops around the cemetery. Uh, and if I walk all of those loops in the cemetery and then walk back to my apartment, I've, uh, I'm able to put in a close to a five, five mile walk, uh, pretty easily. 
So, and uh, while that's tiring, it does feel good to have have completed something like that. So I'd really like to get back to doing it uh, while the weather holds uh, yet this fall. Uh, it's only 40 degrees. And last I checked, it's 44 degrees where I'm at in Michigan right now. So, yikes. It was like 32 when I woke up this morning. But, uh, uh, anyways. So, yeah. Um, so as far as the, uh, the, uh, the B link goes, uh, I want to thank Catherine again for, uh, posting these instructions, uh, to get, get that all enabled. Go to the advanced menu and go to AMD CBS in the black font. And the fourth line is NBIO common options. And then the second one called NB configuration. I don't know how they get the names for these. Uh, in there is the IOMMU set to auto by default, set it to enable and then save and leave the BIOS. So hopefully that will take care of this issue. Um, with, uh, the computer crashing after disconnecting remote desktop, <laughs> I will be testing that out as soon as I, grab the keyboard from the other room and, and plug it in. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it'll be interesting to see. And that may very well make for a good video. Um, I can't so easily do, um, my video capture box during the live stream. Uh, StreamYard doesn't like it too well. Uh, but for my, recorded videos this is something that i could definitely definitely make a video on and it might be uh something that others would find useful as well so i need to find me a cemetery to walk through uh, i can look around and see my fate if i stop walking yeah <laughs> <laughs> that that's always kind of a motivator as well. Um, my 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 other thought about it is that uh, uh, the people around me are quiet; they just lay around and, and don't bother me too much. Um, but uh, then again, I've got a morbid sense of humor. I grew up uh, in a family. Uh, my dad owns and runs two funeral homes, so. I've been spending time in cemeteries since I was like three years old, maybe before that. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, I remember the the sexton at one of the cemeteries we used to go to on a regular basis used to let me get up with him on the the big tractor and and uh, ride around the cemetery while he was mowing the lawn and my dad was doing things there. So it's. Uh, um, yeah. Yep, I saw the instructions and I went through and posted them on screen a minute ago. Uh, probably just a, a little lag between when I'm doing things and uh, uh, when you're seeing them. So... I will definitely be taking a look at that and see what I can do here shortly. But I think this is a good place to wrap things up for today. Uh, this is this has been fun hanging out with everybody, and 
Uh, hopefully, hopefully some of you will come over to the, the matrix server. And, uh, if, uh, if everything goes well with the testing on that, on those instructions that Catherine sent me, then I will, I will post some, some, uh, uh, screenshots and different things in the in the chat and uh, see where we go from there and I'll likely I'll likely uh, turn that into a video eventually as well so on that note I want to thank you all again for coming out this is like I said this has been fun uh didn't go exactly the way I'd planned initially, but uh, sometimes these are the best live streams and, and you make the most uh, progress going through these things. So uh, everybody take care, stay safe, and uh, uh, don't be like my niece who has the COVID. <laughs> so... Uh, luckily, she's only 17, and she's fighting it off pretty well right now. But, uh, yeah, for whatever, whatever reason that their whole family of four, none of them have got vaccinated. But that's a whole other topic for a whole other channel. <laughs> On that note, Thanks again. I will be in the Matrix uh, room momentarily, and I will keep people posted on what I'm able to do with the BIOS on the B-Link. So thanks again. Have a great day. I'll